George's idea was to talk about aliens and conspiracies. Do you believe in aliens? Oh, that's a bit of a, that's a hard question. That deep to go into this early in the morning, but um, I think I would say <sighs> Ronaldo in the World Cup final. <laughs> we got from moon landing to Ronaldo in the World Cup final. A forfeit is a forfeit. You can't welk on it. You can't be soggy. This is this isn't even soggy. <laughs> I will always love you. Hi, I'm Adam. And I'm Josh. And welcome back to the Breaking Bread podcast where form is temporary and class is permanent. Permanently lacking. I was thinking about that on the way. Normally I try to put some little gag in at the beginning. That made me laugh. <laughs> the only one that's laughing. I'm still laughing at what you said before we started rolling just there. I don't think we can repeat it. It was it was describing his lax bumhole at, at certain points in his life. It, that was a comment actually I saw recently. You saw it on uh, on Twitter, right? Little Plum. Little Plum. Little, I do call oh, Little yeah. Plum tweeted that's you asking that. about your... Your bumhole habits. It was the weird with I mean, a lot of people ask me what my what my toilet habits are like, but it was the way he phrased it. He said, What what is your diarrhea routine? <laughs> I just replied, I was like, diarrhea routine. I was like, man, Twitter's just a weird place. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. The time has finally come. We're taking this show on the road. For one night only, Beard Meets Food and myself are doing a live podcast at the Everyman Cinema in Leeds. The event will take place on the 28th of October at 8pm. We're going to have a couple of special guests, some interactive games that you can get involved in and make sure you turn up with an empty stomach. You may need it. The ticket will grant you access to the show and to the official meet and greet afterwards. So even if the show is sh- you get to meet the little man himself. Tickets are available at breakingbreadpod.com or click the link below. We can't wait to see you there. Now on with this week's podcast. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know. It was quite funny. But then he tried he, he try to say, come on, bro. You're not telling me I'm the only person that's curious. Like, well, no, I'm sure people are curious about how I shit for some reason. But like, nobody's asked me what my diarrhea routine is. Hey, I picked this up another listener though. I just, I tweeted him back and put, yeah, a little plum. Episode one of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the, the time beard shit his pants. So that seemed a good a good way to get in, in, in there. We'll which, take all we can get. Which Randy and, and Katina confirmed uh, is not like a, comp- uh, uh, a competitive eater thing because they've never done it. Yeah. Either that or they just don't want to admit it, which I think is probably more likely. Yeah, they were... Um, to be fair, like, he let his hair down, did Randy. You know, like, the Randy that I've ever known of on television YouTube versus the Randy we had in the studio were two wildly different people. He was... Uh, we had to cut a bit as well, didn't we? We had to cut some uh, some, some, some of the stuff that he said. Not because it was like weirdly... Um, uh, it wasn't in any way... It wouldn't have made him cancelable, but um, there, there were some parts we had to trim out. The uh, You were a funny guy, you know. Yeah, he's, he's a laugh. I, I, I really... I, I enjoyed that those uh, four days of chauffeuring him around, actually, because <laughs> it, was, uh, it was quite fun. I know you give him the full uh, like beard meat food experience. Well, I mean, it's... I know what it's like. It's a, a lot of the food challenges around here. They're not exactly in in towns and stuff. And yeah. I thought it would be it would be just would be a nice thing to do to say. You know what? Don't worry about the taxi. I know he's a tight ass as well. So I thought like <laughs> I don't worry about paying for your taxi. I'll I'll uh, shuttle you out there. Um, and I got to experience one of the uh, the the Randy Santel live events, which was uh, which was pretty intense. What was that? What was that like? Like it were only a little little gaff on it that he did it. In. Yeah, yeah. So I mean. That's one of the concerns I would have about doing something like that. How can you control how many people turn up? Because that was it was a small place, but I mean, what, probably 20, 25 people turned up. So everyone's kind of crowded in. It was roasting hot. Like I very rarely get hot, right? But I had to keep going outside for a, you know, a breather. I, I, I think I get now why he does it because it was a really fun experience for him. In that, you know, he, he said, he mentioned on the podcast that he re- his videos are really just live events which happen to be videos yeah. rather than things that are made for YouTube. So... Um, but it was fun. Everyone, you know, got to meet him and you could see all the, all the kids and some of the adults were really, you know, over the moon to meet him and stuff and talk to him for a little bit. So I, I, I get why he does it, but I think I, it would be really hard for me to do something like that. You know, I just th- don't think you can get around the awkwardness. I think somebody put, I don't know who put an Instagram story on and you were just like, with your camera there and it was like dead, deathly silence. Cause like you got to imagine, you know, these challenges that take you, they even take you 20, 30 minutes yeah. when we, I mean, I've done it. I've been to a bunch with you where like, 
I'm just sat there, like, obviously on that vlog that I did in London. your eight-inch pizza. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sat, like, (laughs) flicking through TikTok, eating my pizza, just minding my own business, because, like, you've got, you're just doing your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to have, like, an audience of people just sat there, like... I felt a bit like, you know... They must be underwhelmed. They must be underwhelmed watching that. I don't know. I think some people are. I think probably the majority of people are, but some people really love it, because I've had people say to me sometimes that watch me do it, like, oh, like, so much better watching you live. Very few people, but some people <laughs> actually said to me, I'm like, are you serious? Like, no, nah, you want, that's why my videos are 10 minutes. If it's 30 yeah. minutes of eating, it's 10 minutes of video and probably five minutes of eating because it'll be a five minute intro, you know, because it, you know, it keep, makes things di- dynamic. But I think a lot of people enjoy it for whatever reason, but I found it quite, um, you know, we're talking about wedding speeches yeah. when, when, when Brian was on, Brian Lewis, <laughs> yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. I have to laugh. So the point to that when I'm like, this is weirdly silent, I'm going to have to say something. So I'd be, I'd just keep making cracks and, uh, uh, about like you know what Randy's eating or whatever I'd be like oh Randy I don't know if you've got enough time to beat me and you know stuff like that yeah. just because it felt it did feel at points to me really weird but not in a in a, in a bad way I, I, I think he's probably used to that now but everyone there seemed to really enjoy it nobody was leaving you know if it was boring you'd get up and leave wouldn't you I don't know I mean, we're, we're quite um, polite as a as a, a culture aren't we I think you just persevere through the well, but, I think probably though, because like they both did it, so Katina went first. So if people were bored, they would probably have just yeah, left. Yeah. But, um, I suppose, yeah, they if didn't. they're fans, I, I understand it if they are fans and they're, they're watching the experience, but like objectively speaking, watching you eat is boring as shit. Like, yeah, yeah, it's I like, agree. it's not fun, is it? You know, it's no, like watching no. darts. No, no, but I, I, enjoy, I, I did enjoy these. In fact, I said to him, I was like, I'd love to come out to, because uh, I think they live in Milwaukee, which I've never been to, right? Yeah. I think it's like gun crime, it's like gun crime capital, the, of North American house I'm sure I watched the documentary about that I could be wrong but um, I said it'd be cool to just do you know one of Randy's events just do one of, some of the eating with him yeah uh, like because he's live streaming and everything I just I'm not going to bother to film it won't be on my channel but just turn up and do it with him I think I'd be a laugh maybe to do it once um, but, get, get on the bucket list mate I'm sure yeah but maybe I'll do it I don't know but um, I couldn't you know when people I couldn't do that what he does especially every day you know like you've got to turn up and and be, you know, not not that I couldn't be nice to people, but I just think it <laughs> yeah, would get it would get a bit. You like, couldn't. <laughs> no, I probably. I think it. No, I, I, I could because if people come and watch me, you know me. I would always. I, no, I would always are. be nice. And I would be accommodating. But the whole like getting there, he's got like the. It, I thought it was funny. I was getting it on my Instagram story. Like he whips out all the photographs that he's uh, going to sign, yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. I wouldn't have that in me. I wouldn't be like. And he's. It makes people, sense though because it's efficient, isn't it? Like it. Yeah, yeah. Because if I not, mean, it'd be like, oh, can you sign me? But I just wouldn't want... Back in my iPhone. Or... I wouldn't expect people want me to sign stuff, though. I think that's no, what yeah. I'm getting at. But I, th- I, th- I suppose, like, he's, I mean, he's been in the game a long time. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. He's, um, And that's what he does. He does live events. So that, it's, you know, if we were to do a live event, maybe we would take vinyl copies of the garlic bread song for you to sign. Yeah. That would be good, wouldn't it? How much does it cost to get vinyl press, George? Do you know? Probably too expensive for, uh, for that event. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm doing quite well lately. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> see that <laughs> doing quite well no I only did that to, to wind you up anyway we're not talking about Randy on another you know for this is not like the post Randy Santel podcast no, analysis we're, we're down a rabbit, rabbit hole there else. what have you been doing this week mate mate I've um, I've been busy I actually I, I'm, I'm currently like I'm, I'm under the weather I've got man flu uh, although I do feel a lot better because I'm highly highly caffeinated and drugged up this morning um, yeah, but that, when fake, I, that fake energy helps a lot. When I rolled out of bed this morning, I did not. I I, I was that close to like pulling the plug, and I never. I, 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 I can't remember last time I had a day off off work. Like I felt that rough this morning. But I'm all right. I went up to Newcastle this weekend. I went to um, a wedding do uh, with one of my pals that I, I train with back at sea, and uh, yeah, just cracking on, mate. How, how are you? Yeah, good. Yeah, getting getting ready for uh, the uh, the next mini series. Was this the last one of the year? Probably not. I told Mrs. Bird You're it would joking. be. No, no, there's going to be one more. I when? Think. I don't know yet. Yeah, fucking chill out. Jesus. You seen this, George? The lad, George, how hard is it to get ahead for, well, for the podcast? We're like six weeks ahead. Do you want to just relax a little? No, I but then, you, I know, but like, I, I, I know but. we've got like Christmas time coming up. We've got some some secretive, secretive stuff. We probably could talk about this. I don't know. I never come to life. Let, let, we'll, we'll see if we... Yeah, right. let's keep under wraps until yeah. it's, it's, it's fully, uh, but even fully like, realized. Even like your Christmas song, you know? Oh, I don't know about that this year. You know, I, 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 I don't, I, it's, it's hard. I don't have time. But anyway, um, yeah, what, what I was uh, going to, yeah, I'm getting ready for the next mini series. So I hope people are excited. I mean, this is probably going to sound weird because when people listen to this, I don't even know if the Canada one will be up yet, which was like a month ago. Well, this is it. Like you'll have gone to Oklahoma and come back and we'd still be six months removed from when people are actually going to see it. I don't know why people listen to this podcast. You say that though, the Randy, the... the, Ah, the, the, Mr. Maruka. Um, The the Randy one, I actually, uh, I didn't rush really to edit, but it's going up anachronistically. It's going up 
like soon. Oh, like wow. it's in, I think it's not the next episode, the one after. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Purely because I know the narrative kind of fits in well with the the video that went before it. And I know people want to see it. And I'm just going to surprise people and be like, fuck you, stop complaining that everything's coming up like three months late. That's the way it works. <laughs> <laughs> Which one, um, when does you, the, where are you at the minute on the, on the channel? Like you were with Bob, so I don't know, where, where does Bob no, live? The, no, the, the last, ep- the Philadelphia, the last was episode. Was that last of, one? Yeah, that was the last episode. Oh, right, okay. So the next one is, uh, you're going to want to watch, well, it will have gone up by the time this goes up. But uh, yeah, that's, that's one worth watching. Oh, wow. Um, and yeah, then after that, I don't know what what will happen. But um, yeah, I'm, Oklahoma's next. Oklahoma. I've been there. Yeah. I did Route 66. And uh, from when we left Chicago until we got to probably Oklahoma, Texas, that whole sort of like three or four days that it takes to pass through there. Um, a lot of tornadoes around there. And we were going through it like tornado season. So it's around sort of March, April time. You and, storm uh, chasing like Randy. Well, we were the opposite. We were being <laughs> chased by the storm. So every city that we went through the day after ended up getting like like smashed through by tornadoes don't you ever have that kind of like macabre like uh obsession with i i keep whenever i see like a natural disaster um like a, like an earth like an earthquake or a tornado i always say to Lindsay, i'm like don't you think it'd be kind of cool to experience that i realize this comes across as like a little bit uh safely experience that yeah yeah I get like what if you're there saying. was a way to like experience it and obviously not be at risk of death yeah. I think it would be kind of, uh, it so would be, it'd be something. We it? used to go to Florida quite often in the summertime. Um, so we've got family out there and obviously like in the summer it's hurricane season. So we've been, we've been in hurricanes before and that's pretty wild. Cause it's like starts flooding a little bit. Obviously it's built on swamp land. It's Florida. They say that if, uh, global warming carries on then florida will disappear and all that sort of fun stuff um but yeah that's a pretty wild place is that so i've been through a hurricane i don't really like florida no no it's not somewhere i would rush to go back to why just no i, I don't like it I don't okay well i don't know, ra- I don't know. I don't rather, know why rather than we trash any more american states we'll start off this uh this podcast we have actually got somewhat of a plan together but george is going to take the lead because i've got man flu and adam's incompetent uh, but we'll start off with the youtube comment section oh, yeah, i was, was going to remind you of the comment in case you'd forgotten that i'm ah, supposed to do the comment well, part. well old machine over here yeah you don't sound that ill is he i feel like he's feigning illness mate honestly yeah look at george too. it's oddly convenient isn't it I've got man flu, but I sound exactly the same as usual. There's no stuffiness in the nose or anything. Honestly, I've, I feel like it could I've, be an excuse I've to uh, avoid a certain uh, a certain um, <laughs> forfeit, which which has been coming for a few weeks now. I've doubled dosed on Lemsit this morning. Yeah, anyway, know. a YouTube comment, roll VT. It's time for a YouTube comment from you. This one's from a friend of the show, uh, Lauren Griffin. She's com- she comments religiously oh, yeah. on Thanks, every Lauren. every Appreciate every uh, podcast that we put out. The, we get a lot of comments, right? We read every single one and we see the same names and faces every time. So that's nice. That's it. It. We, it is nice that people enjoy uh, enjoy listening to us idiots. But she said, uh, in, uh, this was on, which episode was this? The Brian Lacey one, yeah? Yeah. It, she said, enjoyable episode, fellas. Um, what were your thoughts on the YouTube boxing scene? <sighs> I have to give props to JJ KSI for training so hard and fighting two opponents in one night. Is that, is that, have you condensed that or is that like the full comment? I've condensed You've condensed it. Condensed the it. Main parts, yeah. I'm, I'm sure I read more than that. Yeah. Well, Lauren, oh, come on you've now. asked the wrong people about this. Lauren, you were doing, I was all like, oh, Lauren, thanks for commenting. <laughs> I didn't know I'm only messing though, because everyone was entitled to an opinion. I, I, I hate this whole bo- YouTube boxing thing. I hate it. I, I don't understand it. Like, I mean, what you, what was the read the the comment again? To say, Enjoyable episode, fellas. What were your thoughts on the, on the YouTube boxing scene? Um, I have to give props to JJ KSI for training so hard and fighting two opponents in one night. Um, no, I disagree. Um, I, I mean, I, I, look, I've got nothing against uh, KSI or like even any of the, uh, the folks that get involved in the, the YouTube boxing thing. If people are throwing money at you to, to go and do something which you know you could you can do quite easily and you might enjoy doing. I'm not going to say you, you shouldn't or couldn't do it. Fighting two people in one night um, implies that the quality of opponent is poor, I would say. 100%. It almost guarantees that the first fight's fixed because what happens if somebody gets knocked out in the first fight? 100%. Um, and I would say uh, in, at a broader level, the thing that I, there are two things, two major things I don't like about it. First of all, I think of 
how real boxers must feel. And people are always like, well, you can't make that argument because people want to watch these guys because they're selling tickets. Yeah, but then you get Sky Sports and Sky Boxing putting all this effort and all everything you see on Facebook. I don't see people talking about up and coming boxers. I don't, I, I don't know a great deal about sport, but yeah. how must they feel when they see people selling out these big arenas or not arenas, but th- these big events and they're not getting covered when they can actually box, right? And the second part, I'll let you come in a second, is I almost wouldn't mind it if they didn't do this whole big, you know, the whole hype thing around it. Yeah. Like if I did a boxing event, let's say somebody is daft enough to offer me tomorrow, five million quid, go fight that KSI guy. And I'd be like, all right, five million quid. I can't really say no to that. Can I get pulverized probably, but okay. And they came, he'd be saying like, yeah, I'm the baddest man on the planet, been training hard. They'd come across to me at the presser and I'd be like, I can't really box, mate, but I know people paid a lot of money to watch. So I'll give my best shot. I'll try to be entertaining. But it's the fact that they, they kind of almost believe this this idea that like Jake Paul's the biggest example of it. I don't want to bash on him because everyone does it. It's easy to do. But talking about you're an elite fighter when you've been boxing two years, yeah. they'll be like Canelo there talking that he's been boxing since he was four years old. I, I just don't get it. And I don't understand why it exists. It's just like wrestling, but less entertaining if you ask me. That was beard. The, the, George likes beard rants. So that's my take that's exactly on it. Exactly what I wanted. But at the same time, Lauren, I, I don't. I, you're obviously entitled to your opinion. I just, I, I, I don't agree. But um, yeah, I mean, if people, if people find it entertaining, I know a lot of people watched it and liked it. Then I mean, it's entertainment. Who am I to say you can't do it? I yeah, just don't, I don't like it. I certainly couldn't have articulated it any better myself. I think a, a quote of the the one and only Mister Beard meets food is: Do you, do you know anybody that's a fan of Jake Paul? Like who? <laughs> Did like I say I, that? I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know anybody that like, I'm walking down the street and like, I'm a fan of Jake Paul. Like, I don't know anybody that, who falls in that category. No. I understand KSI a little bit, um, you know, because he came from like the days of like FIFA and uh, yeah. and the, the machine that is KSI, like there's no doubt in his work ethic. Like the man's putting the, putting the work in, he's doing podcasts, he's doing YouTube videos, he's doing, he's attempting to sing with auto-tune and selling out. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I get why people watch KSI, yeah. though. I, I, talk, I had nothing against the dude, right? Um, it's just that this whole, like, but, the boxing thing. But is, yeah, it's just a performance, in my opinion. It's like, it's it's, it's a well-choreographed performance is the evening, you know, like, yeah. it's, it's his promotion, so therefore he has got ultimate control. Um, there's no denying the amount of, um, like, it's, it's so dangerous to fight. So if, if you're saying you're going to fight two people one night, my... If I were a conspiracy theorist, <laughs> I would say that that has been certainly planned beforehand. Like, if nothing else, at least the quality of opponent, you know, you could. Uh, yeah, it'd be a bit like me doing a, I don't know, like a uh, a keepy uppy contest with somebody, then choosing to to compete rather than against a professional footballer, compete against my sister and my nephew or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's, I know I'm going to beat them both. It'd be like if Danny Mitchell put on an MMA fight and he said, "I'm going to fight three people in one night." And we are those three people. That's only going one way. Do you know what I mean? Somebody, somebody actually tweeted me about on the you know the night of that KSI thing. Yeah, and they were like, "Oh, uh, Beard, are you going to be watching the, the the KSI fight?" I think I said something like, "I, I think it's twenty. Was it twenty quid or something like that on box office or pay pay per view?" I said. I could save 20 quid, take a deck chair outside the the three legs in Leeds and watch somebody knock out 40 people in one night, watch one of the bouncers <laughs> chin 40 drunk idiots in one night. Why would I pay 20 quid to watch it? Well, I, don't, I don't know. Last thing I'll say about the YouTube um, boxing scene, Jake Paul's, it's just been announced that Jake Paul's going to fight Anderson Silva, who is a legit, like he, that, that's probably, that's a legit fight in my opinion. As long as there's been no... Why is he fighting you MMA fighters though? Why not? If you're a boxer, fight a boxer, no? Yeah. There must be dude, tons of dudes lining up that are like, maybe they're not that well-known um, or journeymen or whatever who, who splatter the fuck out of him. Like, why is he not fighting them? Yeah, but if you, were, chat, if you were chatting shit online saying you're the best eater in the world, you're not going to be like, bring it on, Joey Chestnut. You're going to be like, bring it on, Georgie boy. <laughs> like, you know, you're going to pick your, yeah, you're going to cherry I mean, pick your opponents. I, I, I even, even I know that Anderson Silva guy. So yeah. he's not exactly, a, but I just don't get what, if you want to be good at boxing, what, why get an MMA guy? Just fight one of the like ranked boxers. Fight yeah. whoever's 10th ranked boxer in the world. If you're elite, fight whoever is at your weight, the 10th best in the world, right? Yeah. No? CTE is a magical thing. Do you know what I mean? Like Jake Paul's like, brain cells are, are diminishing by the day. So <laughs> I, I don't really know much about Anderson Silver. Is he more of a stand-up or ground type of... He's, a, he's a, like a 
elite level mixed martial artist, but he is a legit boxer. Like he's right. had some boxing fights with some like high level so people and won. Yeah, so like if, if anyone's gonna put him back in his box and send him on his merry way, Anderson Silva should be able to do that. Caveat, he's well past his prime in you know in, in age and in, in Well that's a given, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so sorry, Lauren. Um, no, I don't, I don't want to make you feel bad, Lauren. If we've pissed we, we, on your bonfire, we, we, it's just we, our opinions. Yeah, we, this is the place we can air opinions, and I, yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm not really into YouTube boxing. Let's put it that way. So uh, we are, we've left George in charge of this uh, episode today. So if it all goes to shit from this point, we're no, passing the blame to George. If anything, it's going to improve from this point. George is the one that's in control of stuff. George's idea was to talk about aliens and conspiracies. <laughs> Um, so I think he just wants to get us cancelled. <laughs> That's pretty good, that. I, I expected not to be in tune, but why would we get cancelled about talking about aliens? Well, come more conspiracies. Why even that? You, you know, like Queen's a lizard and <laughs> like... You fucking lizard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, gonna, we, we didn't mention the Tom Stoltman story. We, we'll save that for another oh, time. Go on, say, say it, go on. <laughs> <laughs> we try, everyone keeps asking us to get Tom Stoltman on. Is it Tom? We're try, they're trying to get us on. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know, he's your mate. It's, it is Tom, right? Yeah. <laughs> and we tried way back when and it was like pulling Wee, teeth I right? tried I Josh tried. tried way back when it's like pulling teeth so I but he put up Tom Stoltman put up a video from uh, I guess it was a highlight thing from World's Strongest Man it was yeah. him doing the stones you know so I, I replied I tag, tagged Josh I said uh, man's picking up 200 kilogram stones quicker than he picks up your emails. <laughs> Which is not actually true because he picked up every email, but I actually think I could, I, I, don't, I mean, I hope it would, he's, he can't come on the show if I finish this sentence, but I think <laughs> I've got more chance of holding a conversation with my 18 month old daughter via email than Tom, Tom Stoltman. <laughs> Maybe he's just not one of those email guys. My dad used to be like that. He, he, he couldn't do like uh, digital text speak, but yeah, he, um, he then did tweet me and I thought it was going to be saying, if I ever find you, I'm going to smash the fuck out of you. <laughs> but it wasn't. He said, Let, let's let's do it again. And then there was a confusing um, a bit of discourse that happened thereafter where we, we were trying to pick dates. And I'm like, all right, should we do this date? And he's like, yeah, when you're coming up? And I'm like, no, we, we, I mean, I, I'm inviting you on this podcast. We, 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 we're not coming. We've got a studio. This is how we do things. Yeah. And he, yeah, he left it by saying, okay, let me check my diary. So I'll probably hear from him in 2027, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be a, a, an amazing day. <laughs> if, he, if we ever see him sat at the end of this table, we're going to have to eat our words. Yeah, I'll just strangle us with it. I know. Each, with, Can with you imagine the, the giant human? Anyway, right. So back on to today's topics. Uh, aliens and conspiracies. Adam, do you believe in aliens? Oh, that's a bit of a, that's a hard question. A deep to go into this early in the morning. But um, I think I would say... <sighs> No, but probably not for the reason that you... Th I don't not believe in aliens. I, there's obviously a, the, the the possibility of, of life um, in, the, in the universe. Yeah. I think you would have to say on balance of probability, it's more likely that there is life out there than not. Yeah. But then there are lots of um, kind of theories of physics and stuff like that about it could be the case that humans are the only life form and that life is... Intelligent life is, is that rare that the only explanation as to why we haven't encountered other life is that, you know, it's it's either it's rarity or it's the fact that we haven't mastered close to light speed travel, which, because the universe is so big, right? If yeah. there was another life form, it could be literally the, the other side of the universe, if you think of time and space in that manner. The, but I think the fact that there's no evidence of it, it you would have to say probably not but i don't know i don't know honestly that's, that's, that was again a deep answer i that's, love that shit though it's like quite trippy i love watching the you know like uh, you know brian cox and all yeah, that yeah. like theories of the universe that really interest me and the theory of like kind of the development of life i guess um but that that in itself leads to its own conspiracy theory, well, that's the it? thing in it like i mean you would like to think that in the vastness of what this universe is that there would be other other forms of life out there and then you've got people that are like going on rogan that are um fighter pilots and things that have seen extraterrestrial beings disappear in a flash. And you think, you know, that it seems like a trustworthy source, you know, like he's, he's done a career in the air force. He's seen it. There's, there's somewhat of a video evidence, but he also could have just like licked the back of a frog. And, <laughs> do you know, just, what, he just takes that for a snack and just gone to like another dimension himself, you know, like, I don't know. So you're, getting, you're getting like an F-16 and you think, I'm not going to take some what's -its. I'm going to take a, a tropical frog just to lick on the back of it. <laughs> I know what you mean though, but that comes down to, that's not a question of whether it exists or not. I think that's a question of, are there other, but you know, a bit like Jonathan Creek, like, is there any uh, rational explanation which you maybe have not thought of? 
you know, because there's probably some other, like a refraction of light or anything. Not that I want to discredit people. Um, but yeah, I think that the, the, I think the, the most important question there is, is there any type of life, not necessarily intelligent life in the universe? If you ask me that question, you know, yeah. so like kind of microorganisms and whatnot, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that th that's, I don't say given, but I would be surprised if in the universe there are not like microorganisms, anyway, where there's water and carbon that can develop, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's all sorts of mad stuff that they're still discovering at the bottom of the ocean, you know. Mm. Oh, I mean, I watched, I watched, I watched the film. I, t I texted in the group didn't I? It called, on Netflix called Last Breath. Um, spoiler alert-ish. It's about um, a diver that's in the North Sea that they work on like the wells, you know, which I never actually considered like how people work on that, but obviously a human has to go down there. Um, so like that, however many meters down, in these like fancy suits and they've got to they've got to like go through like a compression process so they can go yeah, down yeah. there and then there's like fucking like all sorts of mad fish and stuff swimming past them and you think did you get that swear jar oh boy we said we can get a swear jar put 50p we, on the counter every we'll, time you hit it i'll hit this buzzer it's 50 yeah. it's 50p every time how much we we'll saying? be fucking broke man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's a quid <laughs> boom there we go don't do that every time josh it's gonna get well annoying yeah, i know yeah so mind yeah, you it's like conditioning though it's like um what's that guy called that whistled for his dog's food the dog whistler? I, I don't Do you know, know what I mean? Rings the bell for the dog. Conditioning, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, anyway, anyway. I don't know what you're talking about. Last breath? Last breath, anyway, amazing. Somebody got stuck on uh, the bottom. Yeah, somebody got it. But my point is, is like that things exist in the deep depths of the ocean where there's so many, like so much pressure and cold and darkness. And then you think about like outside of our world. Pretty wild. I think that, I, I do think there's got to be stuff living out there. So that's a scary thought though, isn't it? I, I, I was watching some like, you know, you get those when like on film four, they, they finish a film too early in the schedule. So they run like a little 10 minute um, list like, of like best moments. And, you yeah. know, like it's normally narrated by like Doyle and Malik Zane. I saw him in a curry house actually in Leeds once. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to say Doyle, he seems like a stand up gazer. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. He, he, and there was, there was the scene from Independence Day. It was like a best, best, uh, most shocking mo movie moment. So, you know, when Will Smith comes out and there's the fucking spaceship. Yeah, yeah. And Linz was like, can you imagine if that happened one day? What would you do? I'm like, I don't know. That is, that, it's a scary thought, isn't it? Because if you, if you take humanity as, uh, as the, this is getting philosophical now. If you take that as the, like the yardstick for, for the behavior of intelligent life, you can only assume it would be hostile, right? Because it's, it's the, it's human nature start shooting to, out. To, I mean, if you look at the history of colonialism, I don't want to get too deep, but to exterminate things that you do not, uh, that you you see as different to yourself. So if it was a, a race of aliens that reached Earth, they'd have to be techn technologically more advanced. You can only assume that they're, uh, it's like that movie Arrival, you ever seen that? With no. uh, Oh, that's a great film. Yeah? Yes, and that's, that's a bit along that same theme. It's about like a spaceship that comes, I think that a few of them come to Earth around major cities and they just hover around for a bit. And people are like, fuck, what do we do? Do we, yeah. do we just shoot? And uh, they, so they get the language specialist, which is played by uh, Amy Amy Adams, is it? I yeah, think yeah, yeah, Is yeah. Jeremy Renner in that as well? Uh, I forget it was in it, but um, yeah. And they, they have to try and figure out their language so they can communicate. And obviously you've got the overbearing uh, military, um, you know, commandos and whatnot, uh, not prominent commandos. And they're like, <laughs> well, we should just fucking shoot. Um, and yeah, they managed to deescalate it. Spoiler alert by the end. But I think that's, that's kind of like what it'd be like, right? I guess. Yeah, I think it'd be pretty terrifying. That's part of me. Most, that's why I want to live in like a rural part of the world. That, you know, just get out of the way. That, that, yeah, I'm just, with you on that because you'd like to think that they're going to go for the major cities first. Even I just, think we'd be all right in Leeds, wouldn't we? I mean, is that? I don't know if that's considered a major city now. What do you reckon is what, what the top? You could say uh, London. I mean, like Liz Truss is from here, so we, we're proper we're proper bollocks now, aren't we? That is, she now, is she now the most famous? Well, it, it trumps Jimmy Savile. I, well, I don't know. I, do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, what's the difference between. I didn't know she was from Leeds. Yeah, it's not good. It ain't good. Or up in Newcastle this weekend, and everyone were complaining about it. And I'm like, ah, don't please don't put me in that category. Like, I don't think you're guilty by association. There are lots of good, lots of cool people from Leeds. Yeah, beard meets food. I wasn't thinking of myself. Mrs. Beard. She's not from Leeds. George. She's George not from, from Leeds. Leeds. No. Where's she from? She's from Normington. Oh, right. Okay. But by so if, if you're within a, a 10 mile radius of Leeds, you just say you're from Leeds, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, but unless you're from Wakefield, in which case you probably don't. Yeah. Well, or Barnsley. I, or I, I guarantee Mrs. Beard, when she's what, younger, Mrs. Beard, she's on her holidays. No, she would say Wakefield. She's yeah. Like, yeah. She's like a diet. She's, she's more of a wakey girl than Leeds. Wow. Yeah. That's an experience as well. You ever been out on a night out in I, Wakefield? I have. <sighs> yeah. It's. Uh, George, George is too young for that. He'll miss oh, he's the... always gigging there, though. He knows what the extremes are like. He gets oh, yeah? p p pints of piss thrown at him and stuff. 
No, play play a fucking like wonder while you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> That's another play garlic bread. <laughs> <laughs> it's another two quid in its way jar there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, George has put a question in here in, the, in, the, in the, the list that he's put Big Bang or higher being creating the earth oh well, come on now list. George this is a bit deep it's only what is it 10 o'clock yeah fucking hell um, don't press the buzzer I, that just comes down whether you're religious or not and that, I, I think like being actually I, I, uh, I was brought up religious were we both did you did, yeah, Catholic, yeah, 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 yeah yeah I was brought up Catholic right um my dad was 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 heavily religious, right? So I like I know what like kids, kids go through as well, like at school. Like you often, it's hard going through school if people know you're religious because there's some or you, you know, because when you're a kid, you just do what your parents say, right? Yeah. You don't really have like, especially if you're eight or whatever, you don't know like what you don't start thinking about the meaning of life, do you? you just do what you know. And if you're a, if you, I think you're like a religious, you come from a religious family that comes with some kind of, you know, kids kids resent that, don't they? Because yeah. like we're essentially like a. Uh, uh, secular nation now, really. Um, so I think, but you, you I, I don't. What I'm trying to say is, like, I, people that are religious get a lot of grief for it, and they kind of ridicule for it a lot. I think, but I'm, I'm, I don't think that at all. I think like you, you, nobody really. You, the Big Bang is a perceivable uh, phenomenon, right? You yeah. can't deny it. Yeah. But like, what came before that, in terms of how humans think about time and space time? Nobody knows. So if you want to say, if it if you make the universe make sense by thinking there's some kind of deity, who might say you're wrong? It's no, it's no different. I don't think it's saying that than to say there was a there was a singularity, a big bang. All right, that's that's kind of a religion in itself, really, because you don't know how it came about. Absolutely, yeah. Right. So I I don't know. I I, I, I can't tell you. I'm, I'm, it, I'm, this I'm, podcast is wild. I, can I feel know, like I've you, never taken magic mushrooms before, but I think <laughs> we should, probably should have had like had some before this podcast. Ayahuasca, like that dude that's always I mean, on like, Joe Rogan. I'm like. I am triple dosed on them sips. So I feel like I'm, I am in a, a little bit of another dimension. So it kind of fits right for That's today. Scorpion might have a sweet little kick to it. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, I can see it over there. It's bit, uh, we'll, we'll get to that at the halfway point. All right, George, like fill us in then. So the first one on the list is the Apollo moon landings, real or fake. So have you got any information that you would like to give to us about this? Well, I've got a little link to a website. So I take it you've seen the famous photos from the moon landing where they plant the American flag. I've seen the photos, George, yeah. Uh, I'll overlay them on screen. But I'm going to debunk this motherfucker straight away. We're not going to spend much time on this, I tell you. Okay. So conspiracy <laughs> theory one, the shadows in the moon landing photos prove the image were faked. Prove the images were faked? Yeah. Why? For what reason? Um, it says here... They are not parallel. The image has been taken as proved by conspiracy theories that the moon landings were faked. Surely if the sun were on... On the, the only light source, the shadows should be parallel. Doesn't this prove the whole scene was mocked in a studio with multiple loss, sources of light? Um, I think. Well, I mean, we could talk about like, the minutia of the moon landing, right? And they, obviously, there were there were uh, motivations for it to be faked because um, that whole kind of Cold War era Russia versus America thing, and you know, they want to be the first to get to put men on the moon or put the humans on the moon. Um, so I, I understand that there's a there's a motivation for it, but you can you can quite literally this was a MythBusters thing. I think it took him five episodes to get to the bottom of it, but I'll tell you <laughs> in five seconds. You if you have like a, a, a one of those like high powered laser thingies, you can bounce it off the reflector pad things they left on the moon. Oh really? And if you see like because of like the quality of uh, deep space, uh, I don't know uh, photography and stuff. Now you can you could perceptibly see what like the moon landing sites and stuff so that you, if it was faked how did that stuff get there you, you have to rationalize how that got there but what if the lizards <laughs> put, give me all the lizards, what man. if the lizards made ai technology that can interject with your high powered um microscope to to put that image there which isn't actually how much there. Lemsip did you fucking have this morning um can I, you also, on Lemsip? I also that. i also saw that Apparently, so this is a mad thing, like about the human like race. Like, if you were to look at us like objectively, you'd say that we're pretty much like a, a bit of a cancer on the the planet because we're just sort of spreading around. <laughs> and it's true because if you look at like what we've learned in the last hundred years about you know the impact that we've had on the the planet, the uh, pollution that we've put into the seas, right? So listen to this. So we've polluted the seas so much now we realize, oh shit, we've polluted the seas. Apparently, recently, someone's satellite crashed into the moon 
and left like a 20, 30 foot crater on the moon. So, but no one's taking ownership. So it's not like, Someone's sat it's not like us when we're at seaside and we're like chucking a can of Coke in the sea. You know, it's, I don't know, I never do how it, many Josh. people, uh, how many people have sent satellites into the, into space and just gone, ah, one of them's gone missing. It'll be right. And it's crashed into the moon. There's a limited amount of damage that a satellite can do in space. I don't think they've got a major litter problem on the moon. How you do know? you know? But that's what we thought about with the sea. The sea was so vast and no, I, now that, that we you know. No, I think that you can, you could make the common sense um, decision that putting stuff into the sea is still bad. If you do it on a good, like if, if you throw a can of Coke in the sea, which of course I'm not advocating, you're going to do limited damage, right? But if, if you're talking about industrial levels of, uh, waste dumping in the sea, you yeah, know that's, that's if, wrong. If we keep, Overfishing, et cetera. Yeah, but if we keep Carefully, launch, you're going to get like hashtag woke breaking bread, uh, trending. Is this a woke? I, this isn't a woke call it now. Charlie. I, well, I don't even know what woke means anymore. Woke to me just used to, used to mean that you are apprised of all the, the relevant knowledge to make, be a decent human being. But now people <laughs> use woke like it's a bad thing. I don't know. I don't even know what woke means. Is it woke to think that littering is bad for the planet? I th- it, later in is bad, isn't it? I mean, I hate when people. It's not a given. I think, I, that, yeah, I think that's kind of my point. Is though, like, if we're <laughs> launching, if we're putting stuff in the sea and we're launching stuff into space, and you've yeah. you've sort of like gone, it'll be right. If that satellite comes back at not on the trajectory that you wanted it to, so whatever. I, I don't, I don't know space travel. Obviously, yeah, I just yeah. do a podcast with Adam. You know, <laughs> but if that thing comes back into orbit and yeah. and hits, fucking, it comes through our studio roof. That's going to be a bad day at the office. Yeah, well, but think about the, the we could sell that story for bags of money. Keep <laughs> us going. We could get some actual good guests on. We wouldn't have to talk about alien well, conspiracy theories. I've got some good news, though, actually. <laughs> oh, Landlord yeah. came and seen us the other day. And oh, yeah. uh, obviously, the energy crisis that we are living through, I, it came with a, an envelope and I'm like, go on then, what's this? Mate? I'm like, <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were going to tell me that it was going to cost me a thousand pound a month just for electricity. And he's like, oh, we, we actually fixed our electricity last year until 2023, so... All good, man. I like the podcast lives. But 2023 is only like four months away. No, December 23. So, oh, we're, we're, so we got like yeah. a, a year and a bit to go. Yeah, that, I, I don't know. I, you would like to think that when satellites go up in space and whatnot, somebody's <laughs> keeping ownership of them, they're tracking them and whatnot. But I think that the amount of damage that could do is fairly limited. You know, I don't think that's really that big of a deal. But to get back to this, the, <laughs> the singular point that George raised, I don't think the moon landings were faked, no. Well, if, if, if you're listening or, or watching, please comment below on your thoughts on the moon landing. Um, and if you've got any supporting evidence. But don't get mad about it. Because like some people are oh, like, yeah. oh my God, you know, I can't believe you think it's real. Like, P- please we're take, just spitballing. Please we're take not, everything we say with a pinch of salt. Yeah, because... we're not space historians. There's a couple of like, on this uh, website that I found, there's like a couple of little, uh, I don't know the words, but like, Little conspiracy theories within the images and stuff as to say why it might be fake. The wind in the flag was a big one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'll run through some of them quickly. Like, there's no stars in the picture. People find that a bit suspicious. I thought the white's dust on the screen. Probably something to do with exposure of the camera, though. All the, I mean, you're not going to see... if well, Even if there was, like, a, a flash on the camera. Not a flash in the in the, in the basic... Like, when you're on holiday, you take... I mean, but if there's an, a light source in front, you're not going to be able to see stars, are you? What you said about the flag waving it says, but there's no wind on the moon. Yeah, but if they if they put it up, they, that it wasn't that to do with the fact that they wanted the flag to show. So there, there was parts that you could you could contrive. So like, if there's no wind on the moon, right? It's just, the flag's just going to be hanging down, which isn't going to look great for a photograph, right? So there are parts that you could con- contrive. It doesn't mean the landing's fake. So you could you could do something to make the flag start. I can imagine Buzz Aldrin there, like, "Fuck Neil, stop playing golf on the moon, right? We need to make this shot look good. What do we do? Oh shit, I don't know. Let's let's string it up with some invisible string or whatever. I don't know." But that doesn't mean that the landings were fake. It says as well, if we really went to the moon in 1969, why have we never been back? What's there? We have been back. Have we? Yeah, the, what are the seven seven crewed missions to the moon, I think? Oh, mate, how are you going to get out? Look check at this, check this, that. Where people have been on the moon, though. <laughs> yeah, well, they're at least... We've sent things to space and, and, and to the moon, haven't we? But I don't know how many crewed... Google crewed missions to the moon. I don't think that's. Right. I feel sorry for the listeners it says now. Six missions landed humans on the moon, beginning with Apollo eleven in 1969. So I was one um, off. Apollo thirteen was intended to land, however, it was restricted to a flyby due to a malfunction aboard the spacecraft. Speaking of great films, you ever seen that? What Apollo thirteen? Saucy film, great film. That. Have I seen it? Um, I don't know. I'm asking you. Nobody does stunts or sets air on fire in it. Um, I, I watched the last. <laughs> I watched the most recent Jackass film. I've not seen it yet, and uh, I, I'm, I'm always disappointed actually. Stuff in my life, him. <laughs> Why? <laughs> um, yes, and I, I, I don't think that one's no. I, I, I don't buy that it's fake. 
I believe I wholeheartedly believe it. And uh, but it must have been. Can you imagine like, when you think about the scope of engineering, all the all the the, the mathematicians and stuff. There was there's I forget the name of the person now, but the the lady that did all the computations of like, you know, at NASA to figure out how they need to land them, what speed they need to be coming in. It's an amazing feat of. My dad used to say, "What's the point? What's the point in putting people on the moon?" I'd be like, "Yeah, but." It's the spirit of exploration. You could say, what's the point in like Columbus finding America or whatever? Um, like, it, it, I'm, I'm really impressed by it. And to, to, to be one of the, like, you're Neil Armstrong or Buzz Aldrin. Do you want to get in this like tin can and try and fly up to the moon and 50-50 yeah, toss of a coin, you might die? I'm um, all right, mate. I think I'll that's stay right, that's the bit, That's the wildest thing. So obviously, like, the, they were sending people up recently, weren't they? Obviously, like, um, all billionaires did it. Elon, that other dude. Branson, Branson Rich, Rick, Ricky Branson, yeah. And, um, <laughs> they, they all, um, I just think, why would you, like, in my head, I'm like, the risk is, I, I don't like flying, right? So to go in a, a spaceship is like beyond my worst nightmare. The thing, just to be sat there with it shaking. Especially back in, back in 69. What? I know. 69, am I getting the date wrong? Brian Adams went up there, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm no, I, I, I think that was officially debunked. I okay. think there was a Mythbuster show on that. All right, well, we'll, we'll assume it's been debunked. Uh, next on, <laughs> all I've got on my list is chemtrails, question mark. Chemtrails? Chem, chemtrails. So it's like, you know, when you see airplanes in the sky, you oh, yeah. see the trail that they leave behind. Yeah. There's like conspiracies that those trails are filled with chemicals to, <laughs> I don't know. What, like, many jet, different... like like the carbon, like buildup of when the when jet fuel explodes through a, a turbine that's really like the what's in there what's it saying then um <laughs> that's a, that's a naff one man fucking skip that one skip that one <laughs> this, is, this is already fucking painful already what they're saying that they're trying to kill us with it oh yeah here we go so various different uh, motivations for this alleged spraying are speculated including sterilization a jaffa like you uh, <laughs> reduction of <laughs> a bit of context he used the word jaffa how, oh, how many podcasts right. they go oh, that? Yeah, because yeah, I'd never even heard of it. He's like, oh, how do I know if I'm not a Jaffa? And I'm like, what the fuck's a Jaffa? And he's like, you know. S seedless orange, is seedless it? orange. And I'm like, that's <laughs> quite funny. <laughs> uh, reduction of life expectancy and mind control or weather control. Wait, I well, reduction of life expectancy, that's been going up pretty uh, pretty solidly, I think, for the last hundred years. Right, So we can get rid of that yeah. one. I don't know if there's any chemical means to mind control, got to say. Um... You could you could argue something like pesticides, but I mean, like it's too high in the atmosphere, isn't it? I feel like I'm the scientific the scientific advisor on this. I one. feel like this is like the worst conspiracy thing because we're just like, we're trying to objectively look at it and go, man, I'm not buying it. I think that one's yeah, that one's naff. What's the next one? Uh, next one is Elvis is alive. <laughs> what the fuck, George? <laughs> El George, that, were, that were a uh, scout for girls song, wasn't it? Was Elvis it? is Elvis dead. Ain't dead. Yeah, man. sing it, come on. No. Good things. All right, okay. Right, <laughs> not, you could, I can guarantee you one thing. I'm not singing a scouting for girls song. Not in your life. <laughs> oh, there's a picture of some old dude with a beard, and they're saying that's him. Look at this. What? Because he looks similar a, to an the Elvis guy. sighting. He looks more like fucking Colonel Sanders than Elvis Presley. This guy, right? Did Ronaldo in the World Cup final. <laughs> <laughs> we got from moon landing to Ronaldo in the World Cup final. I remember that the original Ronaldo. Yeah. R9. Yeah. I remember being devastated watching because I was a massive fan of Ronaldo back in the day. Um, and I remember watching the, which was it, the 98 one? 98. And um, and the, the commentator has been like, oh, we don't know if he's playing. And I'm like, oh man, I really want to. I don't, was it the final? It, it must have been the final, final yeah. yeah. I mean, oh man, he's not going to play. And then he, he, he played. Didn't he have some kind of seizure? So the story is, on the day of the 90, 1998 World Cup final, Brazilian striker Ronaldo suffered a convulsive fit. Ronaldo was initially removed from the starting lineup 72 minutes before the match, before he was reinstated by the Brazil coach shortly before kickoff. Was it Scolari? Phil Scolari at the time? Not Dunga? Sure. Dunga was it? I don't know who it was. Sure. I don't know. No, Dunga was playing. Ignore me. <laughs> Ronaldo sleepwalked through the final with France winning the game. He was the world's most famous sportsman about to take part in the most important match of his career when he suddenly, inexplicably, inexplicably fell ill. Was it stress, epilepsy, or had he been drugged? <laughs> Questions also circulated into who made Ronaldo play the game. The Brazil coach insisted he had the final say, but much speculation focused on uh, Nike, as they were Brazil's multi-million Nike? dollar sponsor. Nike, yeah? It's pronounced Nike, Nike isn't it? Nike. Yeah, if you're outside England, it's Nike. Yeah. 
Sir, who many Brazilians thought had too much control, putting pressure on the striker to play against medical advice. Uh, <laughs> I think that that's that's really easily explainable, isn't it? I mean, you could anyone could suffer. I mean, look at people that Ericsson in the Euros having a, something like that. Attack. That was far more serious. He had that. He had, went to cardiac arrest. But you could have. Any, I mean, especially in the heat, you know, you could have febrile seizures. He could just faint. You know. Yeah. Um, and I, the fact that he was then re-included in that lineup speaks for itself. He's the best player in the world at the time. He's the best striker that's ever lived, I think, by a stretch, right? So why would you not? If if he if he was feeling really ill and he came back around and he said, you know, this is a, if I fainted before July fourth, for example, right? I'm not going to be like, no, I'm, I'm, and I came back around before the start of the contest to be like, oh, sweet, let's do it. So so so, uh, so like he would warm, he would do warm ups or something, and then he binned it, and then. They came back around and played. Is that like the the story? Is that yeah? That's the. I mean, it's it's not quite as high level of conspiracy theories. <laughs> How's this managed landing? to get the list? George is just like <laughs> whatever. Yeah, <laughs> George is funny. He thought you were calling in sick today, so this is uh, the best he could do. <laughs> all right. Well, I don't. I don't know if that's a conspiracy there. But I'm just. I'm pure. I'm just debunking all these now. Come on, like, so what's the next one that I can knock out the park? Uh, next on the list is um, <sighs> Breaking Beard. <laughs> We're going, to, we're going to take a, a, a quick, a short intermission from uh, these conspiracy theories, <laughs> which have ranged quite wildly in, in scope for, I've been waiting for this a few weeks now, as I know the, the audience have, the uh, the forfeit, because uh, George lost the Breaking Beard segment uh, quite a matter of, uh, quite a number of weeks ago now. Final answer. <laughs> yeah, final answer. <laughs> Six, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, could tell, you know, I could tell George was trying to help you there. I'm staring at George like, don't you fucking dare give me clues. Uh, whereby he uh, he had to <laughs> eat a, either a scorpion or a habanero um, which if, see, if he lost. And he, he elected to go with the scorpion because unlike... No. Wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. He elected to go with the scorpion because he said, not unlike me, he can't handle heat. And actually, habaneros are hot, but they're not brutally hot. So I'm surprised you went with the scorpion. I actually thought that we were going to have the option of... Uh, admittedly, I thought we were going to have the option of habanero or the scorpion, right? But you've only brought the scorpion and multiple things have happened today. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm ill. I'm sick, right? I broke my back. That's what that's what Mike Tyson said. No one's after lost, lost the fight. I broke my back, um, and you know I, I had a bad stomach this morning. Oh my! Uh, my my, uh, yeah, my dog like hit, after yeah. an eating contest. But I've never heard so many excuses. I, like, I genuinely though, like what you want a new Joshua? I, uh, <laughs> I I am I'm in a bad state today. I feel rough, and I, I had a yeah. So the habanero probably would have been off the cards because I wouldn't want to. Right. Well, anyway, uh, do you want to do a close up, George, so you can get the yeah? Let's do a little bit of a dun, un- dun. unboxing. Unbo- oh, oh wait, it? I'll film it. So you've got it. I don't. Who's gonna? O- who's opening it? Yeah, you, you open it. You just f- open it to camera. All right. Well, let, should we do like a little zoom? Do you want to? We'll use this one. Look, I've got it. I'm filming it. All right. So just so you can see the package, you got me in 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 shot, George. Yep. <laughs> dun dun dun. You ready? You ready for the unboxing oh, now? Well, un- 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 unpackaging. This cost me an arm and a fucking leg. So if you don't eat it, or if you throw it up, I'm gonna be mad. I just don't understand why it's um, why it exists as a, an option to. I mean, first of all, it sounds like a packet of uh, like Walker's crisps or something. But I feel sick, and I think it weighs that. like it weighs like ten grams. So I wanted one of those big juicy motherfuckers, you know, just fresh out of the wherever you get scorpions from desert, is it? fresh out from under a rock in the Sahara. But uh, this is the worst not. day ever. You should really be opening it and sniffing it and whatnot, not me. Smells like nuts. <laughs> These nuts. <laughs> big. No, it's not big, but uh, let's just get rid of the pack. <laughs> do you want to do another course? <laughs> oh my god, Sunny Jim, uh, it's lads. time. It's time. Should we? It's it's. Um, Why is it all falling to pieces? Well, I. It's been subject to air freight. You can't just walk into the local off license and buy one of these, right? So I would say it's actually um, it's, it's survived quite well. It's missing a claw. Um, oh my god, that looks so bad. <laughs> that looks so bad. You are such a <laughs> sissy. Um, it's got a little uh, oxygen package in there. Why? To keep it from 
getting juicy and like uh, decomposing, basically, right? So it's dehydrated. Um, but just, well, just it's it, like in general, why, why would, any, why, why would anybody eat or buy that? Is it for shit like this? Is this why it exists? I don't think people are kind of casually. <gasps> right. Let's. Uh, I actually feel sick. Have a sniff of it. it smells nice. I don't actually smell too bad. Yeah, it smells like it smells kind of like a a slightly fruitier uh, scent than you get from uh, KP nuts. You know, when you open the bag, yeah, that's got a bit of a fruity. Oh, what? you just pour it out. Its claw fell out. Oh my god. Hey, let's let's uh, can we assemble it so it looks a bit more like a small food, <laughs> maybe? <laughs> oh, oh, that's solid as well, man. That's like let's. Oh, its leg. I just pinged its leg over to me. Yeah. All right. Let's just kind of. Put it back together. I feel like we've been disrespectful to this scorpion. <laughs> so hold it there a second. <laughs> Let me, uh, if we get, if, yeah, I mean, this cost an arm and a leg, so make it snappy. <laughs> <laughs> Where's its stinger? Right, okay. Just, can you stop wetting your pants for a second, right? It's edible. It's fully edible. I guarantee you of that. Um, and it weighs, well, it's, it's six grams. It looks more like 20 grams to me, but it's, it's, a forfeit is a forfeit. You can't welcome it. You can't be soggy. This is, this isn't even soggy, is it? This is. That's dehydrated, so it's kind of crispy. It's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt you. I mean, George, George is wincing more than you are, and you've got to eat the whole thing. Don't be, don't. He's be, joking. No, I'm being dead serious. That's the whole point of breaking beard, isn't it? Pop it all in. One go. Have it done with. Oh, I can see its eyes and its fangs. <laughs> He just looked at me. <laughs> I can't. This is the only reason people have been watching slash listening to the podcast for the past, I don't know, two months. So you can't, you, you can't bail out on it. That would be, especially from somebody that watch it, loves Jackass so much. Johnny Knoxville could be watching this. I don't want to be the next Jack. I don't want to be in Jackass. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't partake of it like you're, you're eating a, you know, like a fine... A uh, bit of caviar on top of a, a, I don't know, a scallop or something. Like I would probably bang it in, chew it, and then get it down. Oh. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Just get it in you. Man. You're, you're. At, imagine if you've been stranded at sea. Lad, I'm a feel of that. Cop for it. I've, I felt it. Oh. <laughs> ah! <laughs> he dropped it. <laughs> Lad, it's, it's bum holes just falling over here, look. Get rid of that, because people will be saying you're not eating the whole thing. Are you going to eat it or what then? Because there's just scorpion, Mate, there's just scorpion dust all over the table now. I'll, I'll, I'll eat this one, right? And you eat that one, and I'll, I'll, I'll donate money to charity. How much are you going to give to charity? I'll give me to do it. A hundred pound to charity 100. today. One hundred pound. And you're going to confirm this for what, me? What charity do you want it to go to? Stroke Association, I will put, I, I will donate one hundred pounds. But I have to eat it. You've got to eat it. I can't do it, mate. Like, that's fucking grim, that. <laughs> Oh. Oh. <laughs> <Is> he... <laughs> <laughs> Waste not want not. Waste not want not. <laughs> oh. It's a bit hairy. <laughs> <laughs> Hairs are tickling my throat. <laughs> <laughs> You're grim, you, you know. That popping. That's so crunchy. Something just popped and it was like... <laughs> oh, God. Something just popped and it felt like there was like a big... Almost like a bunch of hair in it. It felt like really dry and... Uh, <laughs> this is awful to watch. I got to do the ASMR of it. I hope the listeners are enjoying this. Fucking hell. You're grim, you, you know. So you're telling me that you, you repeatedly say to me, I'm, not, I'm just enjoying it now. What does it taste like? It tastes, um, it's salty. It's actually not unpleasant. Apart from, it was almost kind of like a... <laughs> Still crunching it. <laughs> I can't stomach it. This is awful. I don't, I'm like, I, yeah, I'm not feeling, I'm not normally squeamish at all, but that's that, that got to me, yeah. that. This bloke every week is telling me that you could beat the, the, the life out of me in well, a street fight. You can't even eat a scorpion. <laughs> we had you, people like you in the Navy defending the country. <laughs> have I got any in my teeth? And, uh, yeah, you have actually. Yeah. About it. Have I? Um, anyway, I was describing the flavour. It's got, it's, it's almost got, so it's salty, right? It's not wildly unpleasant. 
but it's got almost like sweaty overtones. It's got this kind of, um, you know what I mean? Like it feels like it's it's salt, but not as we know it, Jim. You know, like it's it's got a certain aroma to it. But like a lot of insects, it's it's kind of nutty. Is scorpion an insect? Oh, it's an arachnid, right? Is it an, what the fuck else do you think it is? A mammal? I'm gonna, I, I'm, I'm gonna just do my donation now while you finish your. Uh... Mm, yeah, a little bit of lunch. Uh... The, the when you really grind, grind it down, it's, it's, it's got this kind of sandy, sandy texture to it, which is not, not that pleasant. But that's where it's been. I, I'll take the donation to be honest. So all those weeks of. Um, I'm out. At least you're actually doing the donation on on. Uh, on camera, yeah, either that or you're paying your uh, your, your only fans. What do you think? I'm like I'm uh, I, I, I pledge, I pledge my, <laughs> I pledge my money to the Joke Association. Uh, thank you. You're you're making a big difference, and you even get a gift aid on top of that. So, right, well, in that case, I'm, I'm, you know, it's a charity feel, that I very much support. So I feel like that's. Um, that. I admit, I copped out a little bit. You've you've stepped up to the plate and. Everyone's a winner out there. Josh is just betraying now just how rich he is, though, that you could just... A hundred quid to not eat a scorpion. Rich? That's I'm not rich, but... So you, but you have I, like value your... my, I value my current feelings of of illness over the fact of... That was fucking disgusting, mate. Like, I actually retched. I gipped. It was it, it was so tepid, and it, it really wasn't that bad. And you can tell because I've not taken... I don't have anything to drink. I'm out of breaking beans, but, like, uh, I, I, don't need a, I don't need a drink. It's not, it doesn't taste that bad. I, th- I think this is where George's list just went to, to shit because there's no links. <laughs> it just says JFK, JFK assassination. Oh, I find that quite an interesting one. Yeah? That's what I wanted. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's Adam, not really Adam, sarcastic. Run with it. Run with it. That's not really sarcastic when I said it, but, um, no, I, I find... Have you ever seen the JFK, the, the movie, the Kevin Costner one? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Um, yes, I mean, like, the je- I, I'm, I'm doing all the work here. I'm eating the scorpion. I'm doing the fucking research. Did, did they the not commentary. say it was like... What's the point? You guys even been here? Did, uh, look, it's the first time he's ever done all this. <laughs> it? We've done every single of this show. Is it, did it, we're not a case of that, like, it were an impossible shot from, to be made from where it was made from? Yeah, I, I, one of the quotes, actually, which I find quite interesting is our mate, Gary Oldman. I say our mate just because I've mentioned him in, like, five <laughs> podcasts. Um... He, uh, when he, he played Lee Harvey Oswald in the, the film that I just mentioned, and apparently, you know, obviously, they orient them, you know, and try to take them to some of the locations to get an idea for the, you know, the, the, the feel of the film and, like, what it was like. And the first thing he said when he got to the window where Lee Harvey Oswald was su- supposed to have shot JFK is that's not, it's not a possible shot. Right. Right, see, he said, I do not believe that a man, even, like, an expert marksman, let alone somebody that... They say Lee Harvey Oswald was a, I forget the name they use in the, in the film for him, but um, it was a, an average shot at right. best, right? Yeah. He said, I don't believe it could be done. So that's one of the theories, especially because of how controversial JFK was, and especially the political climate at the time that, you know, with Cuba and stuff, um, that I could believe that was, I mean, if you, if you look at this, some of the documentaries and even the film with Kevin Costner, the, the, the way that the bullet moved, I'm not saying it is a conspiracy theory, but I, I could certainly believe that one. That's one of the more believable ones because right. it, the the entry points and stuff is that. I mean, people talk about like there's a whole Wikipedia page about the magic bullet theory, right? There's a the band I mentioned last a few weeks ago, Funeral for a Friend. Yeah. One of their songs is written about it. I think it's number two on Casually Dressed. It's called Bullet Theory. Um, but yeah, I could totally buy that because you know a lot of um, people in like the FBI, CIA, you know, even domestic sources as well as foreign did not like JFK and what he was uh, doing for whatever reason. So um, I could see them, uh, that, that being one. So one. The, the top dogs got rid of him. Is that yeah. what we're saying? It's a I, bit like, you know, the, uh, well, it's not like that, but like, you know, you talk about um, Epstein. Epstein did kill himself. <laughs> you know, all these people are like high, high profile. They're connected with the top, the top of the top people. That lady, uh, not, Gillian Maxwell. Yeah, not that Josh is making a parallel between JFK and Jeffrey Epstein, just no, for it's, any... It's the elite, it's that elite, you know, like blizzards ruling the, the world. Ghislaine Maxwell got sent down, but the book yeah. didn't get released. And, you know, like all these people that were in... Prince Andrew, they were all in bed with them, but like none of them have got in... None of them have got in trouble. Yeah, well, I've, I think everyone knows that there are certain echelons of, uh, of society which are almost um, unprosecutable. Untouchable. Is that, is that a word? Um but uh, yeah, that, that's totally, I think that's a viable uh, conspiracy theory because they say that, you know, I, I, even down to like the way that that 
that open open car parade thing went down is this the, the, the time i think that there'd been there had been reported uh, like findings that people were planning to kill him so why would the president go around in an open top yeah absolutely uh, car and whatnot and uh yeah i mean i think all, all you need if, if you want to make a an informed decision on whether you think that's a, a conspiracy theory um that is true watch the jfk film with kevin costner it's a good film anyway yeah um and there's a, a, a really long documentary series which i've seen as well it's like a 10 part I watched it ages ago because I can't do that now. I don't have the time. But like, it's like <laughs> a, it's ten hours, I think. Um, but it's like a definitive documentary about JFK, and you know, if it was uh, who had the the you know the motive to 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 kill him. But I could buy that one. I just don't know if it is or not. There we go. I don't know enough about ballistics to know if it's if it is a shot that could have been made. You'd have to get like a a, a, a marksman on, I guess, to figure that out. Well, Any documentary I've watched have always said how the shot was just so like one in a million. <clears throat> yeah. And that was before that Call of Duty. There were no like you know home uh, home sofa la- uh, oh, snipers. Twenty no the, the sofa, yeah, sofa snipers. <laughs> All right, next one on the list is uh, Titanic. So <laughs> the one that I mentioned when we came in. What I kind of prep have you done on this, George? The, it's deteriorating fast. It's this, this podcast deteriorating. It was started bad. How can it, it can't get much worse? <laughs> <laughs> we just I make a clip this. of the scorpion thing. So I mean, like the I heard that the Titanic was a, an insurance job. Um, a bit like getting a whippy, you know what I mean? Like slamming your brakes on in front of someone, running to the back, yeah. Wow, my neck, you know. Um, you sound like a man who's perhaps done that before. Nah, I'm just saying like there's people that have done that, you know, the foot, foot yeah. whippies in. Um, Is that what you call it? Um, yeah, I, I heard that one about the Titanic, but the, um, the, I don't know the specifics of it. So this is, we should really be doing some research here to, to flesh it out. But I, th- I think it was something to do with, they had like a, a sister ship, and it, in in making two of, I don't know if they were identical, but in making two large ships, the White Star Line or whoever, uh, whatever business owned the 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 ship, ships line of ships, <laughs> were, were in the in in the in the red right. They were they were financially not well off, so they they wrote the Titanic off basically on purpose to to get some kind of insurance payout. Again, I, I don't I, 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 that's not one that I'd really. Buy. I mean, you wouldn't, if you're going to do that, you wouldn't put like, you would do it on like a test journey, wouldn't you? You wouldn't put whatever it was, 1600 lives at risk. Um, but yeah, the, the fact that you, you've, you've uh, I've nearly said flew it then, sailed it, pow, <laughs> dry, what do you do? If it's a, if it's a boat without a sail, it, it what sails, do you call it? It still sails. You still the call it sailing. Still, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, the fact they sailed it so rapidly through treacherous waters, I think it was a bit odd, but I don't think it's a conspiracy theory. I think it's just the captain wanted to get there early and be like, yo, look at me, mate. It's I a big ship, it, but it's quick too. Maybe it's because they wanted to make a good film out of it. Do you know, like that could have been reason why. It's a great film though. It is a great film. Jack, I'm flying. <laughs> Not so much that part. <laughs> uh, you know when Fabrizio gets um, gets smashed by the tower that comes down? Yeah. That was, I like Fabrizio. He was my, he was my favorite character. I think, have you seen the, uh, the meme going around at the minute where it's like, uh, Jack, could have fit on the door, but what everyone didn't know is Kate Winslet was turning 26. <laughs> just his missus is 26. He gets, he's getting a lot of heat for that, isn't he? Yeah. Mind you. What a man. Yeah. Like, if that's the way that he wants to live his rock and roll life, let him li- let, it, let the man he's live. Not, he's, not, he's not breaking the law, is he, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, what we're saying, the Titanic, you reckon it's an inside job? No. No? No. That's a deathly silence, man. Like, fuck me. I You're putting me to work today, aren't you? I, I feel thought, like I'm in a, like a podcast sweatshop. I expect, like I'm ashamed to <laughs> talk, monkey. Bigfoot. Do you believe in Bigfoot? Bigfoot? Bigfoot discuss. Yeah, so like <laughs> that these that, that these like Sasquatch beings are living in the wilderness when you're out in the the wilderness. I saw a video on TikTok the other day, right, of a guy at the top of a mountain and he was filming down the mountain and there was this black thing like it was like, it was... Uh, working its way up a mountain re- uh, at extraordinary speed and the size of it was big, but he couldn't quite make out what it was. He couldn't quite make and out And he were like, that's, that's big a bear, bear maybe? No, 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 bigger than a bear. Bigger than a bear? Bigger than a bear. And and What's bigger than a bear? Uh, I mean, in terms of mammals that could be dark, you know, and... and dark and hairy. Dark, dark and, and hairy. hairy. <laughs> Rusty beast, breaky beast. <laughs> <laughs> uh... uh what, what, what a called? moose, a moose would be bigger than a bear. A moose, yeah, but they're not the same shape, are they? You would c- clearly know a moose <laughs> is not Bigfoot, right? It's not erect in the sense that it's walking on two. Unless it's imagine, s- imagine Bigfoot erect. Imagine how big that'd be. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> man, again. I can't, man. I, I'm, I'm supposed to be going away for two and a half weeks. I'm going to make it a month, I think. <laughs> I think I need a bit. Um, what do they call? There's a, there's a 
a name for for the people that study that crypts crypts something for people that study beings that aren't actually real but they might be real crypts uh, uh, who's got time do you know like google bigfoot it'll come up in the first paragraph I'll let, I'll let you do that what i'll do is i'll, I'll just like everything else you, yeah. you do that uh, according to this uh, very well uh, researched article that we've got in front of us it says that what do we know about the mythical creature uh, it's described as standing seven to ten feet tall and weighing more than 35 stone and its footprints are 17 inches long and in 1965, Bigfoot was officially put on the endangered species list in Russia. First of all, it's, it's what? <laughs> Bigfoot was officially... Something that's not being proven to exist is put on an endangered species Not list. only in Russia, in Germany and France also did it in 1967. Got Rudolph on there as well. <laughs> I suppose at least he's a real species. Um, it was cryptozoology, by the way. That's a study of uh, creatures which are not real. Um, no, I, th- I don't think it's... Um, I mean, like Bigfoot's a weird one because it's the, the idea is that it's some somewhere in the in the space between evolution from uh, Homo erectus, right, to Homo sapiens. So it's got to be what you're laughing at. It's funny, yeah. Like it says, the eating habits of Bigfoot are widely disputed, right? Researchers suggest it it may have been vegetarian, while others believe the creature must be a carnivore. This is the sentence that got me. Kit Kats are also reported to be on Bigfoot's menu. <laughs> this is an article. <laughs> so, that, so I feel like that's being victim to the same uh, same hackers as my Wikipedia page and they're just making up nonsense. I saw something on that article as well. It was like, if you were to come across Bigfoot, um, the best thing you can do is try to offer it food for an 80% chance of surviving. The worst thing you can do is scream because you will alert it and it will punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, I was trying to go with like a serious explanation. I, I fucking, I don't know, mate. What were you saying? Sorry, man. No, I'm saying, the idea is that it's somewhere between, on the evolutionary uh, scale, somewhere between, you know, you know, apes and, yeah. and human beings, right? Or it's, some, it's some kind of um, <laughs> offshoot of that particular evolutionary <laughs> spectrum because it's a large ape, which is hairy, but walks on two feet. I, I, I don't know. If that did exist, it wouldn't be... It, 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 would, it, it wouldn't be... Yeah, it's not, it's not like... Uh, I don't know, unicorns or whatever. Although I mean, even unicorns are kind of believable, aren't they? In a sense, because it's just a horse with a horn on the front of its face. Hey, that's true, that. It's true. It's a bit like a Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, that's, that's real, isn't it? No. Uh, what? You, no, it is. No, it's not. There's loads of photographs. You're just trying to wind me up. No, I'm getting up. I'm going to tip this fucking table. In a second. <laughs> now, <laughs> like, now, now I know that you can't eat that scorpion. I know I'll go on, I'll have it. I'll eat it. Do you want to <laughs> Is it? Is that the oh, last one? Last, the last thing it says on this, and I think this is where I think you are. Uh, a Sasquatch, just to like a, a really shit one, a little one, like a little, a little Sasquatch. Uh, mating season for Bigfoot is from March to April, and I imagine that's about. The, <laughs> <laughs> I imagine that Adam's like sexual appetite is like so minimal <laughs> that it just it reduces it to a month. Try get Mrs. B- I, we'll clip that for Mrs. Bird. She'll, she'll confirm that. Um, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> it's, it's hard to fucking hell, man. This has been a mess. If we ever going to get that Spotify deal, they, like that, way, they don't that, that went months ago to that Spotify deal. However, I'm I'm really happy that we managed to get one in the bag, and somehow it lasted an hour over an hour. Ah, <sighs> people love a shambles of a show, don't they? I don't I think, think that's been that. Time. I don't think that's been that bad of a show. Like we started off stronger. I feel, I, I feel say, I, George, I didn't have a it. Is you've got a lot of work to do on this one, Sonny Jim? <laughs> but you've got a lot of editing to do. We're coming back for season two in three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're closing the laptop. Yeah, I've, it, right. That, before we go. Um, I actually I prepared something for you because I know that you you you, you give it all this jive. You say you know oh yeah I'm sick to uh, death of seeing him. You know I can't wait to have a little break and whatnot. And but at the same time you often complain when I go away. She's like well what about the podcast? What about the really professionally orchestrated podcast that we do every week? You, you know you, you, you're sacrificing <laughs> that for the sake of channel, which I think really from Josh's perspective just masks a lot of kind of. Um, romantic feelings towards me really just just, he's not really ready to accept it yet so (laughs) that's been in the comments i think i I prepared something for you which i hope will keep you might want to record it whatever um and on those lonely nights when i'm not here um and i'm not reachable you can think back to this and you know it will give me some solace so i'm hoping it's booted old axes in tune if i should stay I would only be in your way (laughs) so I'll go but I know 
I'll think of you every step of the way. <laughs> you ready? Ready for this? Sing along if you're at home or you listen to the car or taking a shit or you tuned out 30 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I <laughs> will always love uh, you. I will always love you. And I will always love uh, you. This is the weirdest day of my life. <laughs> Catch, you <next> <laughs> <laughs> Catch you next week, folks. <laughs> Peace.